Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football, taking another deep dive into this Florida Gators program and talking about some particular players and position groups they could be addressing in the transfer portal. And as the time has gone on, you're starting to get a sense of where Florida wants to address or what position groups Florida wants to address in the transfer portal. I want to talk about some specific players that have been kind of jumping out of the, the transfer portal for me in terms of targets for the Florida Gators. And I want to go back to the conversation we had last week, which was Florida brought in a, a small class in 2024 from the high school ranks. And although I'm very high on the class, when you're bringing in two top 10 national players in LJ McCray and DJ Lagway, it's a talented class, but it's a small class. And so what does that allow Florida to do in the second half of this transfer portal cycle is get aggressive in the transfer portal, bring in some experienced talent from the group of five or power five level to supplement this youthful roster that Florida is going into the 2024 season with. Want to talk about some players that I am keeping my eye on for the Florida Gators. Before we get into it, just want to say thank you to you guys. A shout out to the Florida fans. This has been a program that has been a blast talking about on the recruiting trail in the transfer portal. You guys have shown a ton of support to the boys. Can't thank you guys enough. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. More importantly, would love to hear from you guys in the comment sections on players, position groups. You guys think the Florida Gators should be targeting in the transfer portal. And without further ado, let's get into this one. And I want to start with a name. Just hit the transfer portal this morning. And this is what going to be immediately one of the better players that's available on that defensive line in the transfer portal, and that's Nick Skirton coming over from Purdue. You take a look at the numbers. I mean, eight and a half sacks, over 10 tackles for a loss in 2023. This is a guy that was one of the premier defensive linemen in the Big Ten in that 2023 season. He was a team captain, but most importantly, we'll get into what he brings to the table. The number one thing I'm focusing on is the versatility. And this is something we've talked about a lot for the Florida Gators the last couple of weeks in terms of having defensive linemen that can kind of move all over that front. Austin Armstrong, one of the things that he wants to do is give a lot of different looks, a lot of different personnel packages in that front seven. And a guy like Nick Skirton kind of allows you to do that because you can play him at the three tech. He's 6'4", 280. You can play him as an edge rusher because he's athletic enough to do so as well. So he gives you that versatility. But more importantly, he's an elite pass rusher. But I want to start with what he does against the run. This is a guy that has 25 run stops in that 2023 season. And you look at Florida, what do they want to do on that defensive line? You got to stop the run on first to second down first. And as good as a guy like Princely you was at rushing the passer, the, the, the run game was not necessarily his strong suit. And you saw Florida get exposed by certain teams in terms of just lining up and consistently running the football on this Florida Gators defense. A guy like Nick Skirton will allow Florida to be more physical and better against the run. Now you look at him as a pass rusher, elite pass rushing numbers, right? 28 quarterback hurries, a 20.8% pass rush win rate, had eight sacks on the season. This is a guy that I think checks off pretty much all the boxes that you want an elite defensive lineman. He can stop the run, he can rush the passer, and he can do a lot of different things on that defensive line in terms of lining up in the three tech, lining up on the edge. This is a guy that when I saw him hit the transfer portal this morning, I said, the Florida Gators, they already got Joey Slackman from Penn. I think Nick Skirton would be massive for the Florida Gators heading into that 2024 season. Would not be surprised for Florida to move in on a guy like Nick Skirton, who again, just hit the transfer portal. The next position I want to go to, and that's this defensive back room. And a guy that has already been reached out to by the Florida Gators, a guy that I have a lot of familiarity with as he was a former Michigan Wolverine, and that's Andre Selden. And a lot of Florida Gator fans are going to take a look at the height and weight and say, I don't know about him jumping up to the SEC level, right? 5'8", 170 pounds. I'll say this, he plays much bigger than his size, but more importantly, that nickel role in a defense is becoming much, much more important over the last couple of years. And I get a lot of a lot of teams want to grab those big boundary cornerbacks like a Triquez Bridges who, who who's coming over from Oregon to the Florida Gators. A guy like Andre Selden comes in at that nickel role, and he is an elite elite cornerback in terms of coverage, especially playing in that nickel role. You take a look at what he's done the last two years: eleven passes defended, 
two picks. In 2023, faced 69 targets, only gave up 31 catches, forced 12 incompletions. Very good feat in terms of sticking with slot defenders, elite in man coverage, but more importantly, he just plays bigger than he is. And I think you look at some elite nickel defenders across the country. I look to Michigan with a guy like Mikey Sandstro, who's 5'9". And yeah, he looks small out there, but man, he plays extremely physical. He's really, really good in man coverage from that nickel position. I think Andre Seldon can kind of provide that value to this Florida team. And again, that nickel role is becoming a massively more important role for a defense. I think Andre Seldon can do that at a high level when you look at the missed tackle rate. If you're concerned about the physicality and him bringing down other SEC guys on the offensive side of the football, 14% missed tackle rate. That is a pretty solid number for a defensive back, a lot high, a lot lower, I should say, than what you saw from Florida in 2023. Andre Seldon, I, this is a sneaky one, and he's already getting looks at from Wisconsin, going to take an official visit there. I think the Florida Gators should really go after a guy like Andre Seldon, who kind of has that mentality of, yeah, I know I'm a little smaller, but I'm going to play my absolute tail off. And he just plays bigger than he is. Now, the next guy I want to go to, and this is, a, again, a, a conversation that we've had a lot in terms of Florida addressing in the transfer portal, and that's the offensive tackle spot. Now, you go out to San Diego State and get a veteran guy that's played at a high level in that Mountain West Conference, you probably want to add one more tackle. And again, what you're looking for is just some depth and some competition at those tackle spots. And I feel like the problem that you saw Billy Napier and this Florida Florida Gator staff have in the transfer portal 12 months ago was they were kind of logo hunting, right? Trying to find those guys from Alabama or Michigan and bringing them in, even though they hadn't really played that much of a quality football at the previous schools. A guy like Jalen Travis, similar to Joey Slackman, making that jump from the Ivy to the Power Five conferences, has played great football for Princeton. And you have concerns about can he make that jump from the Ivy League level to the SEC? Well, you look at the frame, 6'9, 315. I mean, that looks like an SEC defender, has phenomenal athleticism for how big he is. He's a guy that comes in, I think, immediately starts for a starting offensive tackle spot. And when you have competition at that spot, which Florida just quite frankly didn't have last year, that's just going to elevate the room. And a guy like Jalen Travis, who's played a ton of football at the Ivy League level, you feel good about adding him to that offensive tackle room and kind of stimulating some really good competition within that offensive tackle room. The last guy I want to talk about here, Tawi Walker coming from Oklahoma. Now, this is an interesting conversation, and I would like to hear the Florida Gator fans' um, kind of thoughts on this one. A running back in the transfer portal. Right, You obviously lost ETN to Georgia. Montrell Johnson hasn't made up his mind yet. I wouldn't be, I would be surprised if he leaves. I think he's going to come back for another year, but you look at that running back room, a, a running back room that Billy Napier wants to have depth in. Right, You have Trayon Webb, who I think played solid as a true freshman. You have a guy in Kyle Daniels who's coming into that 2024 class who I think is an absolute dog from the state of Mississippi. If Montreal Johnson does, in fact, leave, you definitely want to add a veteran running back into this backfield so you're not relying on sophomores and true freshmen to carry the load at that running back position. A guy like Tawi Walker was Oklahoma's lead back for most of the year before getting banged up in the second half of the season. 95 carries, over 490 yards, seven touchdowns, averaged 5.2 yards per carry. The number that I have circled here in my notebook 283 yards after contact, and that makes sense. You just turn on some highlights of a guy like Tawi Walker. He is kind of just a muscle hamster and runs the ball extremely hard, bounces off tackles, runs through tackles, has the ability to make people miss in space as well, kind of checks off all along all the boxes that you want. Maybe the one he doesn't is that long speed, but he's a guy that has good enough speed to hit the big play as well, forced over 30 missed tackles in that 2023 year, only on 95 carries. I think this is a perfect ad in terms of finding a veteran running back who can come in and provide some stability in that running back room, especially if a guy like Montreal Johnson decides to go to the NFL. Those are a few positions that I'm looking at. Now, the one that you're highlighting the most is probably that offensive tackle spot. And a guy like Jalen Travis, a good option. But that kind of highlights it. it's hard to find offensive linemen in the transfer portal. I think Jalen Travis would certainly be that guy at the running back spot. There are plenty of good ones. I think Tommy Walker is probably my favorite that's left available. 
And then you look at a guy on that defensive line and Nick Skirt, and there are players that can elevate with this Florida team heading into 2024 and going back to Florida, signing a smaller class in 2024 out of high school. They got some numbers to play with. They got the ability to be aggressive in the transfer portal where a lot of other Power 5 programs are trying to figure out their numbers. So I wouldn't be surprised if Florida is one of the bigger players heading into the second half of this transfer portal cycle than most other Power 5 programs. We'll be keeping our eyes on it. Appreciate you guys rocking with the boys as usual. Again, if y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to y'all later.